I'm Josh from Dread Central. Congratulations on this scary new movie. My first question for you today is, when did you first encounter Stephen King in popular culture? Oh, interesting, Josh. I um, Good question. Um... I don't know what's what, what is God, what is um Tommy mm -hmm. knockers from what is that is that a yeah, yeah. there was like a weird mini series early in the nineties on that one too and it was a book so yeah I wonder what they're like you know it's funny because I was a um you know as a child actor I've been doing like mostly through film and television just because he's he's yeah. Uh, And, you know, I, I've been doing it since I was little. And I think either like me or my sister, like, um, oh. Shin for Tommy knockers. Like, God, it's, I'm <laughs> yeah. really drawing my memory here. Cause I could tell you absolutely nothing about the, the book, but I, um, that's when I remember, you know, my mom being, obviously we were too young for it being like, oh yeah, this, this Stephen King, he's responsible for like all the really <laughs> scary stuff. So I think like as a kid I had, that was like kind of my beginning of my consciousness of being like, oh, that's Stephen King. Like that's, that's adult stuff. Like that's too, that's too scary for us. Yeah. And this one dabbles with supernatural horror really well. What yeah. is your relationship with the supernatural? Do you have any experiences that maybe you can't explain? No, I'm a total cynic. I am like a, a realist to the core. It's funny. Like I, yeah, you know what? I, I just mentioned my sister. She's two years older than me. And when we were little, she was like very afraid of the dark and not anymore, obviously, but she was like, she was like, you know, constantly like kind of locking doors and worried about the person who would, you know, grab your ankle under the bed and stuff. And I think because of that, I overcompensated in the yeah. other direction. I've been like, <laughs> you know, I can run around at night in a graveyard and I don't know. And that, I feel like that like ultimately like kind of became part of my personality of like, I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'm not afraid of the dark side. And it's sort of persistent to this day. The irony is like, I, you know, I love it as a device for storytelling and mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. And in, in real life, I don't know, maybe that's, maybe I'm, I should knock on wood here. It's something's going to come visit me tonight in my sleep. And... I don't mean, you never, you don't ever know. Um, have you ever lived in a small town and, Yes or no? Like, why do you think it lends itself so well to this kind of horror? Yes, I have lived in a small town. I've lived in a New England small town, which is one of the reasons why the story resonated with me um, so much. I don't know. When we filmed in Concord, Massachusetts, and it's, you know, just straight from Lexington, Concord, and the, uh, Concord, and it's, it's just, you know, the ghosts of the revolutionary war like everywhere i mean i it's really is paul revere, revere country it's just you know there's just like it's so sleepy hollow and it just it has that you know, we were we'd go out to dinner in old taverns and it just really i'm so glad that we filmed there instead of on a sound stage in los angeles because it really set the vibe for us as characters and for the filmmakers and um yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm I, I'm more like scratching around the surface of it, but it's it. I mean, you're right. It is. It's it's super inherent in the in the um, in the movie, and it's it's kind of a universal theme. Um, just the small town spookiness. I think it's like the secrets too that ha people have the information they have each other, and like, do you trust your neighbor? And um, yeah, uh, you know, and I I will briefly also. I'm so glad they kept it in the time period because it was you know it was written in the 70s and it's it still takes place in the 70s. I'm glad they didn't modernize it. It just gives it a kind of uh, almost even uh, ironically a timeless feel by setting it in the past and not. Oh, totally. Yes, I agree with that. I'm glad they did too. My last question for you today is, you know, the original Salem's Lot is responsible for ruining so many childhoods, especially one scene in particular with a window. And I'm wondering, what was a movie that really impacted you when you were young and like maybe scarred you for life? 100% watching Scream when oh. I was way too young to be watching that movie on a like blockbuster rental that my sister had rented. And it was like one of my first nights, like my parents went out to dinner. It was like when I was like, and my sister was at a friend's house. And I was home alone, like right when I, I don't know how old that would have been, but like right when I was like old enough to be home alone in the house without supervision. And I watched Scream and it just scared the crap out of me. And I remember the phone rang. That's a heavy one. And I audibly screamed. <laughs>
Um, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, that's that's why it's a classic. Um, yes. thank you so much for chatting with me today. Congrats on the movie. I'm excited for everyone to check it out. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Great talking to you. Thanks. Uh-huh.